This is the second film that I've actually kind of been truly disappointed in this year. What was the first? Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. I have it, I have it, I have it. Have it. Focus, right here. Let's have a little drink. Yeah, I'm Scott. And I'm TJ. And this is a review. On today's episode, we'll be reviewing the most controversial film of 2022, Don't Worry Darling. But a uh, subtle Don't. note, not controversy for the film, but for everything behind the scenes. That's what you mean, right? Yeah, all the nonsense behind the scenes, which turns out more entertaining than the film itself. But Don't Worry Darling is the uh, latest movie directed by Olivia Wilde. She's directed things before? Booksmart. Or is this her first? Booksmart! This is her second feature film uh, that she directed, and she also co-stars in the film alongside... Harry Styles, Florence Pugh, and of course, Chris Pine. And Nick uh, Kroll. So right, and Nick Kroll. Well, <laughs> yeah, sure. He's, Nick Kroll is also in the film. Right away, I'll give you kind of a, eh, it's a thumbs meh for me. Same. I'd say you could watch it. It's it's entertaining, but the ending is, is awful. One of the worst twists in movie history. We'll get more into that in a minute. What about you, Teej? It's uh, pretty mad, but more yes than no, but not enough to be a thumbs up. And we're going to get into our movie, but before that, of course, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the stuff. Yeah, this is a very twisty and turny movie, so we're going to put up the spoiler skull warning now. So there it is, spoiler skull is in effect. Okay, so first of all, before we get into anything in this movie... Did Chris Pine get spin on by Harry Styles? Yes or no? Absolutely. A hundred percent! Without a doubt. There's no question! I just popped very quickly to Venice to spit on Chris Pine. No, no question at all. Have you se- You've seen that second angle, right? Where it's like I, so clear, you can see the... Like right it's on It's like him. the Zabruder film. I'm watching it over and over. Like back into the left. Back yep. into the left. It's like the JFK assassination. I can't stop watching it. It's, I waited until after I watched the movie. I didn't want any of this shit to spoil the movie. I kind of heard about it on the side, but I just avoided it. But after the movie, my God, it's, it's an entertaining video. And it is blatant, exactly what happens. Chris Pine's face says a lot of things. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, uh, also, you know, that's a sign of a good actor. When their face can say a lot of things. (laughs) You know who's terrible at their face saying anything in this movie harry Harry styles Styles. yeah (laughs) i mean in that in the spitting video he's completely stone-faced which bravo to him for doing that but yes you're right uh he goes from shock to anger to incredulity in in the matter of seconds chris Pine does and it's it's great watching the movie with that kind of retroactively thinking about it it affects the movie in a big way because that dynamic between Harry Styles and Chris Pine and Chris Pine and Florence Pugh and Olivia Watt, all four of them, their dynamic, it it's palpably noticeable that something was going on behind the scenes. And all this stuff is so obviously like there's something to it. Now. And I will say, so, you know, there's all this drama behind the scenes. Yeah. I, I didn't let it affect my view on the movie. I saw all no. the drama ahead of time because it was just in my face, unfortunately. But I sat down in the theater with one other person, and I watched this film. And none of that bothered me as I was watching. The only piece of behind the scenes that bothered me as I watched it was realizing how much better this movie would be with Shia LaBeouf. And what a statement that is because, boy... Am I not a fan of Shia LaBeouf? But I agree 100%. This would have been a great role for him. And not just because Harry Styles is so terrible. I mean, like, you could replace a lot of people and it would be better. But I mean, Ryan Gosling like could have been a sure. great Harry Styles replacement. Like, sure. there's a lot like of a them. Jake, a Jake Gyllenhaal would be great for this. I mean, mm-hmm. there is... Oh, so, the... There is a great twist in the movie where there's a kind of appearance change for Harry Styles that I will say is effective just because it's such a shocking departure from the beautiful pop star that everyone knows and loves or whatever. Um, And that was noticeable in my theater, which was packed and filled with people that were obviously half of which were there for the controversy. 
um, and we're reacting as such throughout the movie. Uh, the movie itself, so what do we have here? You've seen the trailers. Basically, it is Florence Pugh plays Alice. She's living in a 50s suburban utopia with Harry Styles, Jack. Jack? Whatever. And uh, they live in this little neighborhood with like 10 other people. And they're all the same. They all do the same thing. They get up every day at the same time. The husbands all go off to work. The wives all put on sundresses and clean the house and make pot roasts. And then the husbands get home and they do oral on their wives and have dinner and repeat, I guess. And raise and kids sometimes. Some of them raise kids, sure. So most of this movie, it's just that sprinkled with weird imagery and throughout the whole movie you're like, what's going on? If you've seen any movie and any movie ever you know right away that they're in a simulation oh my god we already told you there's spoilers alert so we're gonna get out of, this out of the way right away because this will inform the rest of the movie there's no reason to talk about the rest of the events in this movie without talking about them under the lens of this is a simulation in which florence Pugh is a prisoner that harry styles has locked up in the real world and has forced her to repeat this simulation for forever. Ever. You know, as I'm watching it, I'm like, is this the female Matrix? Yeah, well, I this is Andrew Tate's total recall. <laughs> the whole time I was watching this, I was just thinking, like, this is just... It, it is total recall. It's the same fucking idea of, like, except it's a misogynist's world. And, you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh... My wife is too busy for me in the real world. Or wife or girlfriend, they don't say if they're married in the real world. Um, so I'm going to make this simulation where she has to just stay home and be my, my sex slave, essentially. Yeah, um, and, not, and not just that, but in the simulation, I'll make myself British. Yeah, which he's, is British. But in the real world, he's not. But he doesn't have more than three lines in the in the real world so i don't even know why they bothered having that distinction i feel like they made that distinction so that they could justify his accent being terrible throughout the whole well movie. because I mean, like the simulation's question, breaking that's why sometimes yeah. he sounds american sometimes he sounds british yeah i think i think you're right i think i think on set in the in the simulation set he was supposed to be doing an american accent and failed and so they had to throw that line in later to explain it. Yeah, that, that had reshoots all over it. <laughs> but, like, the movie is such... So many of the, the, the shots and the scenes are just such hitting you over the head, obvious metaphors. She's trapped in a gilded cage. She's, she's suffocating in here. And she's literally being pressed up against the glass. I'm like, dude, we get it. Like, the problem with this movie for me is the twist, it's like you're waiting for the, you know the twist is coming the whole movie, and you're waiting for it, and you're waiting for it, and you're waiting for it, and you finally get to it, and then the movie ends with, okay, we're going to kind of wrap this up really quick, but then the rest of the movie is just uh, foreshadowing. You can't make a whole movie that's just foreshadowing what it is and then have no payoff to what it is. It's just such a frustrating watch where you're like, yeah, we get it. We're all, all of us are ten steps ahead of you, or if we aren't, we're giving the movie the benefit of the doubt that it's not that obvious and it's something more clever. Yeah. And it's not. <laughs> so after after Harry Styles gets the promotion, uh, cut 20 minutes of that out after he gets the promotion and give us 20 minutes of her out of the simulation so we Do can mean, actually see like what happens. You mean cut the dance sequence that doesn't make any fucking sense? No, Scott. Do you not get Bruce. the appeal of having Harry Styles in? He's a puppet. Do you get it? He's a puppet. Yeah, it's terrible. But, you know, uh, Harry just, Styles, dance monkey but Yeah, dance. I mean, it. so they, yeah, they show you the real world. And they Florence Pugh is a, is a surgeon. But apparently nobody's been, one, we don't know how long she's been trapped in this, in all fairness. Right, but she's got like a mom and dad, a right? Why are they not like, where's my daughter? Like, I don't know. It's there's so many questions that I would have loved to just have at least 
something to go, oh, that's this. But they had to spend they had to spend forty minutes of the movie with the creepy ballerina dancer flashbacks, only to realize that oh, it's 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 like how they sink in. It doesn't even make sense. It's just a visual thing they use to sink them into the world. But like, why do we need to see this so much? It's just to make it creepy and make it like unsettling. Which is it's effect visually. I think it is unsettling and creepy and. It's effective. I think visually it's well well executed. Yeah, I mean, my problem with this movie is the first half works and the second half doesn't. And then it makes the first half just be like, okay, so all of that was kind of nothing. Because yeah, you don't want to go back and watch the first half knowing where it's leading. Exactly. But the first half of the film, I'm sitting in this theater going, I'm into this movie. Like, I yeah. really am enjoying this. You're like, what is... Where are they going during the day? And honestly, even without the simulation angle, I was like, they're probably just going off and jerking off in some cave or something. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way they're doing... I actually wanted that to be a twist where they get over to the cave and they're just like sipping beers and playing pinball or something in there. It's just just like a straight up man's man cave (laughs) from like, from like Nathan for you. They're watching old reruns of Super Bowls. This man cave is starting to look like a man's grave. Am I right? (laughs) <laughs> but so yeah you, they, it, this question uh, this movie does nothing but raise questions and it answers virtually none of them and a movie doesn't have to hand you everything but a movie like this you kind of you need something to go on to, to kind of ground you otherwise it's just like weird visuals and okay she's in a she's in grand theft gaslight what what's next you know yeah, I mean, truly, what's next? I'd love to. Yes, know. actually, yes. Like <laughs> she, I mean, they imply that you can die in the simulation, you die in real life, which uh, that never makes sense to me. No, no, no only men, I thought, can die in the simulation. Well, they, they do say, a man dies in a simulation, he dies in real life. They don't explicitly say that a woman won't die, but it's more so that they're just women don't well, matter. Well, that's oh. See, to me, I thought that women just got reset every time they, like, died in this. I don't know. It's unclear. And that... Because the, yeah, the, neighbor, the neighbor who was also going through a similar uh, realization that she was in a simulation, who, like, slit her throat and killed herself, they, they said that she was fine, but they never show her again. Which, apparently, a lot of her stuff was cut. Right, so we don't know. That's what I'm saying. So we, don't we literally know. don't know if... Because I had theorized that okay, maybe women can't die in the simulation because men want to be able to abuse them to the point of death and reset them. But why would they give them the... Which is horrible. But why would they give them the option to kill themselves if they have the option to not kill them? I don't know. None of it makes... I'm assuming that anybody that dies, dies in real life. I I mean, that's a safe assumption. It's just weird to single out men die in here, they die in real life. Because if it was everyone, why wouldn't you say, if you die in here, you die in real life? Oh, I laughed out loud in the theater at that line because it was so odd. (laughs) There were a few, like, really, like, head-turning lines. Well, the, the big question that I have for this movie is, what about the trolley driver? I was just going to bring him up, yeah. <laughs> is that what like is a guy? Deal? Is that like an NPC or is that like a guy whose like dream is to be in a simulation driving a driving a trolley around and so? Well, and it's they they so they tell you they reveal that the men are all leaving the simulation every day to go to the real world to work at a job to pay for the simulation. But that raises the question, are they working at just a regular job or are they working for the simulation? And we never see Chris Pine in the real world, which I think is a big problem as well. Like, I'd love to see, like, incel, ratty tail version. You know, like, he's got, yeah. like, a ponytail or something, and he's, like, disgusting in a mother's bed. Yeah, do the whole stereotypical thing and make him, like, a greasy nerd. I don't know. I, there's some something you could have done here, I think. There absolutely is. And it comes down to they didn't give us any real, real world scenes. Besides seeing that Harry Styles is jobless and that's why he puts her in this simulation. But like you said, it's not clear if they work for the company or if they work a normal job. You'd have to assume they work for the company because if you could just get a normal job, why wouldn't he have just got a normal job? But then it also (laughs) begs the question that like, 
if everyone that pays for this service is working for the company, then how, who pays for the service to run? If it's just them running, but it doesn't, there's something missing here. There's like a layer that's like, so they just, right. they, there's, they've there, created There's a, a layer of big business that like isn't fleshed out that needs to be fleshed out. <laughs> well, it's like a, it's like this never ending loop where it's like, yeah, well it's self-sufficient because we have this utopia and everyone that lives here, they, they pay for it by working here. But I'm like, yeah, then what's the fucking point? Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange. Um so yeah, it 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 kind of leaves you wanting more. I mean, it's well Florence Pugh's great, uh, Chris Pine is great. I think all the acting is great except for Harry Styles. Thank you for that disclaimer cuz he was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it made me really glad he didn't get Elvis. Oh. Oh god. Oh God! The breaking into a oh Elvis. El- <laughs> Could you imagine him trying to do the Elvis accent? <laughs> like it would oh, be terrible. I, I, would, I would love to. I think it'd be hilarious. But I would love to see yeah. that only if Weird Al directed it. <laughs> <laughs> and Weird Al is also playing Colonel Parker. Uh, absolutely fantastic! I would watch that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Um, but I don't, I mean, like, it's funny, like, this movie has been this big controversy. I honestly don't have anything else. I think I'm ready for final thoughts. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? It's, it's not worth the controversy surrounding it. There's a lot of buzz around this movie. At the end of the day, this felt like Olivia Wilde binge watched the black mirror during the pandemic. And she thought she could make a movie version of it. And problem is, is black mirror works in 45 minute increments. This would have worked as an episode of the black mirror. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's an exact episode like this. Probably, uh, as it stands, it's a lot of lead up to nothing. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a lot of smoke and mirrors, which kind of works at the end of the day. The performances are okay. The movie's well-crafted, but it's such a lame twist that you've seen so many times before that I can't recommend it. I would give Don't Worry Darling uh, two airplanes out of ten. Out of five. TJ, final thoughts. You know, this movie had so much potential. The performances besides Harry Styles are fantastic, but I couldn't really recommend it. Don't go out of your way to see it. It, The controversy also doesn't help the film, although in my opinion, it never does. Um, But you know what? It's really well crafted in the first half. So I did enjoy it. I like the performances, but look, if you don't see Don't Worry Darling, don't worry, darling. You ain't missing much. That's my final thought. I'm going to give it... You know what? And I would like to say, hypothetically, with Shia or anyone else better cast than Harry Styles, this probably could have been a four out of five for me, and I could have let some story stuff go, but have to have to be taken out of it time and time again by an expressionless Harry Styles just kind of took me out of it too many times. So could have been a four out of five. I'm going to give it a three. It's just all right. If you like this genre, go check it out. But it's nothing to write home about. So three records out of five. Yeah, pretty, pretty disappointing. I mean, you know, I had, you know, not high hopes for this thing, but it, I kind of did. Interesting. Look, look cool. I, I honestly, like this kind of thing. This is the second film that I've actually kind of been truly disappointed in this year. What was the first? Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I uh, I didn't have... I, I kind of expected a little bit of a disappointment. I feel like Olivia Wilde, as a director, uh, has kind of failed in her job, just in the sense that she has become more of the story about this movie than the movie itself. And I think any director that does that has failed. No matter the quality of the movie. If you have made yourself... And I don't know that she did it on purpose, but she has become a bigger story than this movie itself. And it's it's overshadowed in a way that... It's just unfortunate. So, that's been Don't Worry Darling. Don't worry, darling. It's fine. <laughs> watch it on Watch it on streaming when it comes out on HBO or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
I always skip that. Be sure to tune in next week for whatever we got in store for you. Be sure to like and subscribe to the old channel. Uh, we're on remote remote style for the for a little bit here. Um, so like and subscribe. I don't See know. you guys later. <laughs> Peace deuces. Peace deuces. Wee. All right, then let's stop the recording. Uh, did it stop recording? <laughs>